Richard II opens with the king calling on John of Gaunt, one of his top advisors, a noble himself, a great courtier, someone known for being a, um, a, a magnificent statesman, uh, to sacrifice his son. This is Bolingbroke, um, who will become Henry IV. Opening lines of the play, Old John of Gaunt, time-honored Lancaster, hast thou, according to thy oath and bond, brought hither Henry Hereford, thy bold son, here to make good the boisterous late appeal, which then our leisure would not let us hear, against the Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Mowbray. Um, th th this is quite dramatic. The king is saying to John of Gaunt, bring me your son, because... He has a charge against Mowbray. And the backstory that might not be immediately apparent to a novice reader of Shakespeare, someone not immediately familiar with the history, is that Bolingbroke's charge against Mowbray is actually potentially a charge against the king himself. And that is because what Bolingbroke wants to charge Mowbray with is not only the murder of his uncle, um, a man named Woodstock, Gaunt's brother, but not uh, being loyal to the king in terms of, you know, collecting resources after battle and paying taxes and things like that. But Mowbray works for King Richard. So when Bolingbroke challenges Mowbray's integrity, he is also indirectly challenging Richard, the king's in integrity. Now, you can't challenge a king directly, and you can't challenge a king directly in part because particularly at this time, but of course all the way up through Shakespeare's time, a king is on the throne by divine right. It is a theory of divine rights of kings. That is, the king is on the throne because God wants that king on the throne. So if you go after a king, you are, according to the dominant ideology of the time, going after God directly. And that's bad. In fact, in Act 1, Scene 2, which immediately follows the, the initial exchange and, and exchange of charges between Mowbray and Bolingbroke, we have an interrupted scene, a small scene, Act 1, Scene 2, between Gaunt and uh, the Duchess of Gloucester, who is Woodstock's wife. This is his sister-in-law. And his sister-in-law, who's aging herself, is saying to Gaunt, you've got to act. You've got to revenge your brother. You know King Richard had something to do with the death of Woodstock. You've got to act and do something or you're, you know, to, or you're not a man. Uh, you're, you're, you're a powerful figure, Gaunt, even though you're old too, but you've got to do something. Gaunt's response is telling. This is Act 1, Scene 2. And again, Shakespeare organizes not just which characters are on stage together, but what scenes follow which scenes. It's that term dramaturgy, right? He is guiding an audience continually how to understand or how to read and especially how to feel at a given moment of watching a play, simply how he orchestrates or puts scenes together. Anyways, Gaunt's response is, I can't, I can't challenge the king. God's is the quarrel. God's is the quarrel. This is lines 37 of Act 1, Scene 2. For God's substitute, his deputy anointed in his sight, hath caused his death, the which if wrongfully let heaven revenge, for I may never lift an angry arm against his minister. And the Duchess says, well, then where am I to go? And this is a problem for anyone when, when a king acts unjustly or what's perceived to be acting unjustly. He says, you have to go to God, the widow's champion in defense. This is not what she wanted to hear, of course. And this is actually a very poignant scene because we've got these two older figures, family members, uh, very close who have lived a long time and lived through a lot together, uh, parting ways. Uh, but that scene is dropped into the middle, and it interrupts again this quarrel between Mowbray and Bolingbroke, a quarrel the king is desperately trying to find a way out of. Um, it comes down to a you know trial by combat, something that would have been antiquated by Shakespeare's time. Trial by combat means, in effect, the person who wins a fight is the one who's telling the truth. Uh, so Richard is stuck. Because if Bolingbroke wins this trial by con combat, then that means Mowbray is guilty. And if Mowbray is guilty, the king is guilty by implication. On the other hand, right, if Mowbray wins the fight, 
the king is losing his nephew, right? His nephew, Bolingbroke, and that will put him at odds with John of Gaunt. And John of Gaunt is again, while aged, a very powerful and important figure in this world. 